I did not like their game plan against Jacksonville. I thought it was passive, and I like Joe Philbin, and I think he's taken Ryan Tannehill to about what Ryan Tannehill can do, and that's fine. Um, and I have Miami going to the playoffs. I thought it was curious this week. First of all, Jacksonville's got real players, but it's clear that the way to beat Jacksonville, and it's worked for everybody, is put pressure on Blake Bortles. He's young. Uh, they've got a bunch of young receivers. Communication's been a problem. They don't get penalized a lot. I mean, Jacksonville doesn't necessarily beat itself. It just has limited personnel and spots. They don't have a great offensive line. And so Miami comes in with a terrific defensive line, plays passive football. At the end of the game, here's my issue with Joe Philbin. At the end of the game, reportedly, and and Sue started ad-libbing out of the defensive schemes. This is a coach that allowed Richie Incognito to take over his locker room. My question with Joe Philbin is, is he a leader? I mean, if you create a really good locker room, is Richie Incognito even close to a leadership position? Are you is Bill Belichick allowing Indomic and Sue to ad lib in the second game of the year? Generally, if you go to a new business, even as a star, you mind your P's and Q's. To me, I have questions about the leadership of Joel Philbin. It's not the smarts, it's not his ability to upgrade his quarterback, but that locker room. That just shouldn't happen. The Richie Incognito stuff is a cautionary tale on, on several fronts. That loud guy isn't right guy ever. You go to a bar, loud guy is never smartest guy ever. Guys go to bars and they think increased volume equals increased IQ. Loud guy in a locker room, my years in covering a team, has never been smart guy or right guy. Richie Incognito was loud guy, and Philbin allowed it to happen. So I, I think if you're a fan, you would question sort of Philbin's leadership qualities. 